Why are you afraid to give the hand to your neighbor? Hallelujah. Put your two hands for Jesus. I want to welcome everybody who is watching us on uh, our telecast, on Facebook, on YouTube. I want you to know that God is ready for you. Connect yourself, share the page. God will touch you. God will visit you in Jesus' name. And as the word of God is going to be coming forth, do not forget to send your likes or to share because the anointing works with connectivity. Put it to hands for Jesus. Now, I had an experience today when I was driving. I was driving uh, from a certain place coming to church. And while I was on the steering driving, my eyes came out of the car. And I began to see the life of all my sons. Oh, my sons. Oh, my sons. Oh, my sons. And the Lord is to me that tell your sons, familiarity will kill them. That's what God spoke to me. He said, familiarity is what will kill your sons. Because the anointing is there. But they are too familiar. Too familiar. To the anointing. I asked God, God, why are you saying this? Because while I was driving, I think you saw me, I was very quiet. I was very quiet. It's like, while I was driving, I could literally see what God was saying. And God said, you have wonderful sons, wonderful daughters, but one of problem that they have is too familiar. They are too close to the anointing. Very close. Now let me give you something. This Bible you can read it at a distance. And when you are too close you can't read it. When you are too close to the anointing, there are things that you do that even you, you don't know that you are making a mistake. Because you are just too close to the anointing. When you are serving the anointing, there must be a distance. There must be a distance so that you can see the kind of a person you are dealing with. What kind of a spirit does he have? And uh, who is he in my life? Because if you don't understand that, if you don't understand that, you will never receive, no matter how much. I have personally seen people that were very close to men of God. A man like Gehazi, he had even the ability to save the prophet, yet he died. They even, even received an impartation. He received an impartation, but he could not work with the impartation. They are most they, are, they receive the impartation. You can receive impartation to prophesy. You can prophesy. You can heal. But the problem it will be in terms of your character. And the difference between Elijah and Elisha. It's not the anointing. <laughs> but it's the character. Gehazi was very anointed. He even had the privilege to save a prophet. To be close to a prophet. The prophet. And the Bible says, one day this general in the army of God called Naaman, the Bible says he had leprosy. And the Bible says that Naaman went. He only heard that in Israel there was a prophet. And the Bible says, he went to see this prophet. And the Bible says, he did not even see the prophet. The prophet is sent Naaman to tell the general, he said, there's no need even for you to see the prophet. 
Just go and dip yourself in the river seven times and you shall be healed. And the Bible says this a rich man, he came with substance. He came with substance and the Bible says he, has, he took the substance, took the money, took the money and the Bible says he went and gave it to Elisha and the Bible says Elisha refused. He took it back. Take it back. Take it back. If you think ministry is about money, if you think ministry is about money, if you think ministry is about uh, 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 popularity, if you think ministry is about just putting on suits, if you think ministry is just about standing on the altar, or if you think ministry is just about praying for people, that is not ministry. That is ministry. And the Bible says, then the prophet rejected the money. The Bible says when he rejected the money, the Bible says, hmm. while this man took the money, the Bible says Gehazi was very close to the prophet. The Bible says he went behind the prophet. There are many people who are close to prophets who went behind the prophet. And that's a reason you find that the anointing will go in front of you attack you. Because whenever you go behind the prophet, it means the back because the prophet has got no ability to see his back. Because his concentration, it is in the front. And the one who sees his back, it is God. And that's the reason if you concentrate on the back of the prophet, you will stop seeing what he sees. Even when you are close to the prophet, even when you eat with a prophet, even when a prophet calls you, you will still regard him as a normal person. The Bible says, then he went behind the prophet. And the Bible says, he went and he took the money that, that the prophet rejected. He went and he took the money that the prophet rejected. There are most people, when they are serving the prophet, it's not that some blessings, we don't want them. It's not that I don't want to enjoy. It's not that I don't want to make it. But I understand the timings of God. I understand how God spoke to me when he was calling me in this ministry. He gave me principles. He told me, this is the way you are going to do things. This is the way you are going to speak. You are going to at this kind of a time. And this is the root. That's the reason prophet, every prophet that is sent by God, there is a way they use to walk. The Bible says he went and took the money and after he took the money, it says he squandered it. Without fear. Without fear. Not only money, but you can take the prophet for granted. You can take the anointing for granted. I have personally seen, and I'm, I'm speaking this tonight. I'm speaking this tonight. I'm speaking this tonight. And I want you to know that God is not a respecter of personality. Whenever, let me tell you, I've been in ministry for the past 25 years. I have served great and mighty men of God. Some of them, when I meet them, when I meet them, some of you, it will take you time to meet them. And one of the secrets to the anointing, one of the secrets to receive the anointing, it is not how close you are. It is not about close, closeness. No, there are people that are not close to the anointing, yet they are close to the man of God. You being close to the man of God, does not mean you know the man of God. Or you being around the man of God does not mean you know the man of God. There are many things that even some of my sons, you don't know. There are things that God even speaks to me. I was telling him today, I was walking with him. I told him, he said, this is what I see. The Lord is going to do this. The prophet sees something and he begins to announce before it happens. So this is whatever you see here, whatever you see here, this is not church. 
this is not change. You must be able to see beyond. This is not success. This is not success. <laughs> this is not success. This is the beginning of success. You must be able to see. When you are serving a prophet, Moses, Moses, Moses was a man of temper. And when Joshua was serving Moses, he knew how Moses was. You can never save a man that you don't know. You can't. Because whatever he will be doing to you to be hating you. That was a time when I was not speaking to my father. Not speaking to my father. There are things that God will love to teach you. Not while you are laughing. You want every time to be happy. You want every time to be spoon fed. You want to be, to be, to be pampered. God does not teach us on, only on good things. No. That's the reason he says even when we go through the valleys of the shadow of death. So he wants you to go through. So your maturity, your maturity in ministry is not determined by your preaching. Or by how you prophesy. No. When I sit here, when I sit here, I hear my sons. I'm able to calculate. This one is mature. This one is not mature. This one, he can think very well. This one has a revelation. I'm able, I'm able to, 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 to check. So preaching is not maturity. Prophesying is not maturity. Then what is maturity? Maturity is the ability to handle situations. The way you see it. That's the reason some of you, if God can give you money today, if God can give you money today, money will kill you. The same money which is good will kill you and take you to hell. That's the reason God is saying it's better you become poor. Because I love you so much. Familiarity. Kills. God spoke to me to tell all my sons and daughters. The Lord does not lie. He does not lie. You can die in the presence of the anointing. Oh, Jesus is there. You are dying. Dying like this. Because of your character. When you are serving a father. A prophet. Anointed man of God. Even if when he's annoyed. He's annoyed. Even if when he is annoyed. Or when something has happened. Maybe he tries to. To, to behave very funny, that is not that is not your work. That's not your work. Your duty it is to receive. The Bible says, "He that receiveth." <laughs> I went somewhere to see a certain man of God, one of the great man of God. When I reached, when I reached, there were protocols, massive protocols. Massive protocols. And they told me, an anointed man of God, they told me, stop here. I was with you. He said, stop here. Sit here. They impounded my anointing. And I understood the principle of the anointing. Whenever you want to learn something, look, 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 look. God does not use filled containers. You know too much. That's the reason God is not using you. You know everything. That's the reason, even when God wants to speak to you, you, you are too big. You know everything. Even when God can use a child to speak to you, you can't hear. God does not use a filled containers. The jars must be empty so that Jesus can perform a miracle. Otherwise, if the jars are still filled with wine, no miracle. 
That's the reason God does not feel people who are too proud. Too proud because of the service that God has given you. He has given you the ability to save him. He has given you the gift of life. He has given you the gift of life. He has given you the two legs to come to church. He has given you the eyes to see, yet there are people that don't have eyes. He has given you finances, finances, yet you still complain. You are too familiar to God. Familiarity has made a lot of people in the church. I told somebody, I said, my son, wait here. I told him, wait. He did not know that what I was doing or the instruction I gave him, it is to test him. Do you think that when you are around me, do you, when you are around me, do you think for you to be called my son, for you to be called my son, do you think I just call you just a son just like that? I put you into test. Some of you, that's the reason I don't call you sons. You are colleagues. You are colleagues. You are qualified to be called colleagues. Colleagues. Or my father's. That's the reason the heart of a father will close over you. Because you know too much. <laughs> you know too much. <laughs> Not that he doesn't want to speak to you. When he wants to speak, you say, I, I know. So he closes up. He said, no, it's better. Let me be quiet. That's the reason you end up being dying, dying, and dying. There are things that the Lord has spoken to me. And it's only me who knows them. But for me to sit down and tell my son, he says, son, this is what the Lord has said. It will take maturity to follow a man who is not rich, yet you see him rich. <laughs> Elisha said, my Lord, my Lord, my Lord, my Lord, my Lord. Do you think things of God, they are just for play? For play? I told him, I told him today, I said, the level that I have reached spiritually is very dangerous. I told him, I said, the level that I have reached spiritually is very dangerous. Even for you to reach there, it will take you for the rest of your life. I told him, me when I sit down like this, my eyes are very, very sharp. You are privileged to save a man who can hear from the Lord. It's a privilege. That's a reason in the Bible, whenever, whenever you saw those who saved the prophet, most of them, most of them, I can tell you, most of them, they were in problem. The Bible says there was a man the son of a prophet who died in credits. Yet the prophet was rich. Character. You are with the prophet, you are busy on phone? On phone? A man who hears from the Lord, you are busy on phone? He's talking to you, your face is, is very sad. Where God wants to convey a message. You are sad. What are you sad of? What are you sad of? God is about to, re, to, to remove some certain things. You are not ready to receive. Your heart is a full of stone. It's a stony heart. There are many people who are dead. Yet living. There are many people who are dead. Yet living. They already died. Long time. Pray that the Lord God give you a heart. A heart of flesh. The Bible says he shall remove the heart of stone and give you the heart of flesh. You are not a stone. You are his child. When he's speaking, your heart will bear witness. Even when what, what I'm speaking, if it is not true, your heart will tell you. <laughs> your heart is, a, you know, right now, your spirit and my spirit is communicating. 
It's communicating. It's communicating. So when I look at you, I'm not just speaking to your face. I'm speaking to your spirit. Your spirit also is talking to me. Ask God to give you a, a humble heart that you may live. You are too young. Okay, what comes in your mind every time, every time you see people, people with problems, eh? People with problems, they come here. They just want, they just want to see me. What, what comes in your mind? Okay, let me put it like, imagine if what I was doing, if it is fake. Imagine if God did not call me genuinely. Tell me. That's the reason I promise you and I tell you the truth that whatever you see here is never a game. This is a reality. You can be in a place yet you don't know that God is in the place. Open up your heart. Never be familiar to the anointing. <laughs> I put my I put my sons in test, if you don't know. This one, I put him in test. For you to, for me to call you, you are my son. Don't think I did not scrutinize your spirit. I checked. That's the reason that some others are not qualified to be called his sons. They are sandy. Because the moment I give them the pulpit, he's, 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 he, the pulpit will kill them. I checked his spirit. And one day I put him in test. I put him in test. He did not even know. And when I reached home, I was speaking to my wife. I said, you see that boy? That one. He has the mark. What I've been looking for, that boy has it. That boy has it. Don't be a prodigal son. A prodigal son. Don't save a prophet with an agenda. I was talking yesterday about double dealers on Facebook. Double dealers. Men that are double dealers. There are also sons that are double dealers. They are, they, 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 they are not satisfied with what God has brought that's the reason you are not learning. He can tell you that when he, he is my elder brother, he did not know how to prophesy. He did not know how to prophesy. I told him he was working. I, he was working. I told him, say, stop working. Follow me. Follow me. You, if I tell you stop working, you can you do it? You will first begin to think about your children. Papa, what will my children eat? Oh, what about my car? What about this? What about that? I put him on test. For one year, you can ask him. I'm very solid. For one year, he was not talking to me. I blocked him. Ask him. I blocked him. My own brother, I blocked him. I said, yes, I know you are my brother, but you must understand that spiritually, things of God, they don't work based on brotherhood. If he was a person who, if he was a person who was supposed to, to, to play around with the anointing, it is him. It's my older brother. Whenever he, he is in problem, he will call me. I, I have a problem. Now there, I am not speaking as a brother. I am speaking as a spiritual man, advising him. And if, if he's not ready to hear me, he can't see what I see. But with brothers, we can talk. But on the spiritual level, these are two different sides. You, 
can ask him. I've been with him from the conception of my ministry. Conception of my ministry. I told him, this is how you do it. You see this. When you see this, this is the interpretation. It is a joy. It is a joy. It is a joy to see a son, a son do better than his father. Don't be a son of, a re of reproach. Don't be a daughter who brings embarrassment to the name of your father. Where I've reached here on this dimension that I've reached, there are some other sons I can't even just refuse them. Okay, it's okay, you are my son. It's okay. Facebook son. I just know you on Facebook, not physically. This is what has brought me this far. Today, a Muslim came, a Muslim came, and I told him, I said, wait, you will see. A Muslim came, he came to see the prophet, a Muslim. You, you are not even a Muslim. You are a Shangad, and a Zulu, and a Spedi. A Muslim came, you know, a stongy Muslim. He came, and I could... I looked at him and the Lord said, look at him again. And I knew his story. I told him, this is what God is saying. This is what God is saying. If you see a Muslim crying, it means the whip is too painful. It is, you know, it's really astonishing to see a Muslim crying when he's receiving prophecy and a Christian to look like, like, a, like, like a permanent stone. No crying. Nothing like showing like, you know, he has been touched. Familiarity. Whenever you have been receiving something day and day, day and day, day and day, you end up becoming familiar. Oh, it's just prophecy. You know, dad is just going to come here. He's going to say, can I prophesy? I know his move. I know. Oh, my brother. You don't know. I, I, I know that. No one here knows me. Not even her. I'll ask. She will tell you. She gets afraid of me. A man who disappears, I disappear, poo, I appear in the house. You say you know him. If I do that, if I do that in your house, you will be the same person to say, flying pastor. <laughs> you are so familiar with the anointing, that's the reason when the, when, when, when the HIV people are getting healed, to you it's just a normal thing. You don't even cry. You can't even kneel down. Even just to lift up hands. You can't. To you it's so familiar. You have made it like, you know, a circus or a comedy. We are not comedians. We speak with power and authority. This is, this is, this is not comedy. Uh, how you... How can I, if it is comedy, how can I mention even what happened in your life? If it is comedy. That's the reason. Whenever a prophet enters the house, the prophet is able to access the amount of honor he received. So you'll be able to operate based on the honor. That's the reason you will see a prophet when he's preaching or when he's talking. You'll be like, can I, can I continue? Can I stop? Can I stop? Because he's able to sense. I'm able to sense right now whether you're looking at me. Whether you look at that side, I'm able to look at you also. Even if when I look at this side, I'm able to tell you that you, that person there, this is what you are doing. Because we are not working with physical side. We have got, right now as I'm ministering, I've got the senses around me for each and every person now. So do you want God to bless you? Do you want God to bless you? I don't know. I know how Papa eats. 
Thank God that God showed you how I eat. It's a privilege. It was a privilege for the sons of Noah to saw the nakedness. To saw where they were removed from. Not to begin to talk against the source of their creation. They began to talk against the source of their creation. And the Bible says the man was, was drunk. But when he woke up, the man was able to prophesy. Even if when I close my eyes like this, even if you speak against me, I will still know you. <laughs> there are some certain people, they'll come in the church here. They'll, I'll greet them. I know these ones. These ones. How can you sit under a man of God and just become against his anointing? To become a project. While other people, they are celebrating the anointing. You, you have just, you, you are just against the anointing. And they come like, ah, they will kneel down. Hello, 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 Papa. Eh, eh. And you see, eh, should, 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 should I kneel? No, they are standing while they are kneeling. Your kneeling does not mean you are so submissive. That's the reason you see me nowadays. When you want to kneel down, I say, stand up, stand up, stand up. Stand up. I don't beg. I don't beg for people to kneel down for me. Don't. And I don't tell people. I said, kneel, kneel, kneel. now, now, I've come now. Uh -huh. Now you must kneel down for me. No. Authority. And the honor. Whenever you see a man that God has sent for your life, even Jesus Christ had to kneel down before John the Baptist. For all scripture, Jesus, do you know that John refused? But Jesus, do it. For all scriptures to be fulfilled. There are things that we do in submission, loyalty, for scriptures to be fulfilled. Make a decision to continue sinning. Wow, you are around the prophet. Make a decision to continue playing. Wow, you are around the prophet. The decision, it is yours. If you want to receive, receive and close your mouth. Go. If you want to talk, continue talking. Talk and talk. If you want God to touch you, let him touch you. The anointing has a principle. I have seen people that were very anointed finishing like a tissue. Finishing. Oh, you are, you are, you are busy. You can't worship God because of the money that you have. Eh? Of the two, 200,000 rands in your account. Eh, wait it to finish. That's the reason sometimes God will remove all your money just to humble you. There are ladies, there are ladies, are ladies who are saying, ah, me, I'll never go to church. 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 God he said, eh, okay, wait, I will show you. God went to the account, removed all the money, all the money. The account was on book balance. And the following day when they woke up, they began crying. Oh, oh, baloi, 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 baloi. And God will allow baloi. He will allow them to come and torment you. Allow them. Ah, baloi, baloi, no, you know, baloi, no, baloi, 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 baloi. Now you are afraid. When you go to sleep, God will allow even your uncle to come and attack you with a machet. You will see him chasing you. And then from there, after you see that the problem, it is too hard for you. Like, eh, the next thing, 
I must go to church. The place where you are refusing is the place where you are running to. You, you are alive today. You are thinking church is a joke. Wait when you die, when you are on the hospital bed, when you are sick. You will even sit down to say, I need my pastor just to come and speak a word. Just an anointed man of God just to come and speak a word or just to pray for me. You want God to remember you? To remember you for what? You have never done anything in the church. Church, you were not there. Your church, it was bad. Be faithful. And God will bless you. From now till December. The Lord will exhort himself through his servant. God does not need to bless everyone here. No. No. God doesn't need to bless everyone here. No. Only one. That is you. So that you can bless your whole entire families. Lift up your hands. Lift up your hands. Say, Father, in Jesus' name, start with me. Start with me. In Jesus' name. Lift your hands. Pray in tongues. Pray in tongues. Pray in tongues. Pray in tongues. La cross of Russia, dear Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We give you praise. Thank you, La cross of Ligush. Also, Randa Lagush of Asia Laguses. Lord, we lift your name on high. King of glory, we reverence you. We surrender to you, our God, this evening. Thank you for the word of correction. La grace of Ish. Sale Oh, Jesus, you are awesome. You are awesome to be praised. Whether to be lifted. There is none like you. There is none like you. Thank you, King of Glory. Ancient of days, we give you the praise. Oh, Jesus. We praise you, Lord. We lift you. We reverence you. You are the covenant keeping God. You are the ancient of days, the lily of the valley. And we lift your name on high. We say thank you. We say thank you. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you. We give you praise. We give you the glory. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Amen. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Amen. Your amen is so weak. I said your amen is so weak. Amen. Your amen is still weak. Amen. Can I hear a Holy Ghost filled amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Daddy, thank you so much for the privilege to minister in your presence. Moms, thank you so much to minister in your presence. Somebody, you're welcome. All the viewers, all our viewers, that are watching us on Facebook, uh, on YouTube. We want you to stay tuned, keep on watching, share the page, give us our likes, connect to the anointing of the house and you will be blessed. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I want us to look at something so cardinal tonight because the spirit of God he wants us to learn something something new today hallelujah praise him thank you so much please we thank you you may take your seats hallelujah 
God wants to bless us and he has designed and he has a plan to bless us but then we need to deal with some certain things that are the hindrance to our blessings these are things that hinder us from receiving from the Lord not that the Lord has not released the blessing but God has released the blessing but then we still have certain things that we are still in contact with that are acting as a resistance to the anointing. Hallelujah. Many people are not receiving not because God is not there. Many people are not getting blessed not because God has not released the blessing. Many people are not married not because God has not given them the marriage. God has given them all that they need but they haven't received it. Now today we're going to deal with what is it that causes people not to receive. Hallelujah. 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 Tell your neighbor, dealing with the, the mixed people. Tell your neighbor, we are dealing with the mixed people tonight. And we are going to be reading from the book of Exodus. Exodus chapter number 12. The 12th chapter. We'll read from verse 35. 35 to 38. Are you there? Praise the Lord. Exodus chapter number 12, verse 35. The Bible reads, And the children of Israel did according to the word of Moses. And they borrowed of the Egyptians jewels of silver and jewels of gold and raiment. And the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians so that they lent unto them such things as they required and they spoiled the Egyptians. And of the children of Israel so John from Ramesses to Sackloth about 600,000 on foot that were men besides children. And a mixed multitude went up also with them and flocks and herds even very much keto. Praise the Lord. Tonight we are dealing with a mixed group. And I was, I've been studying for the past days and God has been teaching me certain things. To say, people are not receiving from my servant, people are not receiving from me because there are certain things that they are still mingling with. There are certain people that are still around them that are a resistant, that are a resisting factor to them receiving or to their miracles. Now we are seeing the children of Israel leaving Egypt. And the Bible says a mixed group, a mixed multitude, a mixed people. Hallelujah. So we have the the Israelites, they are leaving Egypt, but we have a certain group of people that is known. And this group of people is the Egyptians. Now, this Egyptian people, they did not follow Moses because of the call. They are not following Moses because God has called him. They are, not, they are, they are following Moses, they don't even believe in him. These are types of people that are following the man that God has loaded all because of signs. Hallelujah. They are not following the man because God has called him. They are not following the man because of his vision. Even if the man has given them the vision, they still are not interested in knowing the vision of the man. They, they are not interested in knowing the ideology of God on their lives. All they are interested in is miracle. If there is no miracle, 
they begin to mama. If there is no miracle, they begin to attack the man. If there's no miracle, they begin to call the man all sorts of names. Now, if you mingle with such people, <laughs> your miracle is delayed. Your miracle is shut down. And God himself gets angry with you because you have begun to doubt the man that God sent for you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, this mixed multitude is a group that is only interested in science. Praise the Lord. This is why in the Holy Ghost Embassy, you come in, you have the word, you have deliverance, you have healing, you have all it takes. Why? Because we are not raising, my father is not raising a church that is based on prophecy alone. He's not raising a church that is based on deliverance alone. He's raising a church that is based on the word. But you better identify who is around you. If you don't know who is around you, you will be in jeopardy over your own miracle. Your own life will be delayed years and years. You'll be on the same level where your friends are progressing. You are in the same place. Your friends are receiving. You're not receiving. The same well is giving you salt water. Your, your friends are getting sugar, water that is full of sugar. How come? The same anointing is blessed. The anointing is not segregative. It does not select. But it, it, it is all about your reception that you give to the anointing. Hallelujah. So, here is the children of Israel. They are leaving Egypt. They are leaving Egypt. Now, there is this group that has been seeing how this man has been performing wonders. So, they are also leaving their land, Egypt, and they are following Moses. And the book of Numbers, chapter number 11, the book of Numbers, chapter number 11, let's go there. I want to show you something. Praise the Lord. Are you there? Numbers chapter number 11, verse 4. I read. And the mixed multitude that was among them fell a lasting, and the children of Israel also wept again and said, Who shall give us flesh to eat? We remember the fish which we did eat in Egypt freely. The cucumbers, the melons, and the leeks, and the onions, and the garlic. Praise the Lord. But now our soul is dried away. There is nothing at all besides this manna before our eyes. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, the men they have now, the journey has begun. And God has provided manna. And they begin to complain. The Bible says, the mixed group was the first to complain. And the Bible says, and also the children of Israel, also, the children of Israel also complained. So which means the children of Israel did not begin the murmur. The mixed group that was with them began the murmuring. And when they began the murmuring, the children of Israel followed upon the murmuring. Hallelujah. Now, when they did so, the Lord was angry with them. The Lord was annoyed with them. Why? Because when God sent Moses, he loaded him with all that it takes to take them out of Egypt. And what they saw, what was they were eating was of Egypt. They, they are not to bring it in the promised land. Hallelujah. 
So some of you, you have limited your own self by the reason of compromising with your friend. I came from such such a church and in our church we don't do like this. Come on, that is your church, you are in Holy Ghost Embassy. We don't do things like that in Holy Ghost Embassy. You, all, you only begin to delay your miracle if you begin to operate, not based on what the man of God is saying, but operating because of your friend. So the children of Israel, they are driving away from the plan of God or from the voice of God via their servant Moses and they are beginning to move by what the children of, of Egypt or the mixed multitude or the mixed group are saying. This is what is happening to many of us. This is what is happening to many of us today. God has packaged everything that you need. You have been with a man of God for a long time. You have stood with him. You have seen how much he has prayed for your family. You have seen how God has done mighty things through him. But the moment somebody comes with a corruptive message, he tells you, you, you quick to believe it. Now such people, they only come to disturb you. They only come to hinder the plan of God over your life. Because you will not see God come down to bless you. You will only see God blessing you through a man. Tell your neighbor, run away. Tell your neighbor, run away. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You better run away. Let me tell you, there is nobody who can stop what God has for you except yourself. There is nobody who can stop or there is no hindrance that is greater than yourself to your own miracle. Because when this person comes to you, they will tell you something. What they tell you will corrupt your faith. And, and the enemy of you, be, of, of you not receiving from the Lord is doubt. Immediately doubt enters. God doesn't give you. You can't receive from him. You need to deal with the mixed multitude. You need to deal with the corrupt, corrupt seed around you. If you see that this person, uh -uh, every time I'm with this person, is just talking about so and so in church. Every time I'm in the, uh, with this person, is just talking about the woman of God. He's talking about the man of God. He's talking about this pastor. Hey, come on, run away from such a person. You better run away. They are not helping you. They are simply helping you to dig your own grave. And the Bible says the anger of the Lord came against the children of Israel. Came against the children of Israel. Why? Because the children of Israel forgot. Let me tell you. Always remember what God has done for you. Some of you what provokes the anger of the Lord is that how he has been moving, how he has, how he has been touching you, you have, you have forgotten it because of simple things that are happening around you. You have easily forgotten what God has done. Tonight, I want somebody to check themselves. Check around you. Check around you, the people around you. It is every time they are with you, they are busy telling you about this and that. They can't tell you what God is about to do in your own life. All they are telling you is how the devil has been inflicting you with pain. Hey, come on. Leave such people. Praise the Lord. I want you to know that don't compromise with God, what God has told you. What God has given you, don't compromise with it. He has been with you when you were in that car accident. What do you want to compromise now? 
when that marriage was getting so hot, God has been with you. Why are you compromising now? When you are so sick, he sent somebody who came to pray for you. You were healed. Why do you want to compromise now? Come on, run away from such people. Listen, Paul is writing something so cardinal. In the book of Philippians chapter number 3 verse 2, he says, Beware of dogs. Who bring to you false doctrines? Beware, beware. Let, let me tell you. If, if by the gate there, we put beware of dogs. Hallelujah. Somebody is in the road. He's passing in the road. Where are the dogs? Are they in the street or in here? Now, Paul is speaking in church. Say, beware of dogs. He is in church and he's speaking, beware of dogs. Now, I begin to wonder, do we have dogs in church? We don't have. And I begin to look, to look at the characteristics. And why is he saying, beware of dogs? We, we are looking at, Paul has taught these people the right doctrine. Praise the Lord. He has taught the doctrine based on the word of God. And some guys come, they begin to also bring in their doctrines. And Paul hears. So there are some certain things that you need to understand, child of God. If your friend does them, uh -uh, it is not for you. It is not for you. You better understand it. It is not for you. So some of you, God has given you, he has given you a platform. He has settled you in a ministry. You have seen his works. You have not only seen, you have also testified of his goodness. You have tasted how sweet he has been to you. And now somebody comes and wants to corrupt you. He wants to give you a false doctrine against what God has said. Hey, come on. Don't allow that person. I want you to understand that the people around us who we associate with makes us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Walk with the wise and you shall be wise. You, you can't walk with the wise and, don't, and you're not wise. That's impossible. So if you walk with people that have doubt always, they are doubting God, you will also doubt God. You will also doubt all those he has anointed just to shift you to another level. You better understand that you need to deal with your environment. Your environment has a, play, has a place to play in your life. When I talk about environment, I mean the people. Some of you just allow anybody. You mingle with everybody. Even those that are just coming to bring you down, you mingle with them. It's the reason until today you are still struggling. And God is watching you. He's saying, if you only you can deal with these people around you. If only you can deal with these people around you. You need to deal with certain people and let them go. You have been holding on to certain people that have been the hindrance. Your spiritual father told you, he said, daughter, watch out of that guy. That guy don't. And when your spiritual father told you that, you said, ah, my father is jealous of that guy. Okay. And you are with that guy, and that guy tells you, to say, leave that church. Leave that man. Leave that man. 
your faith has been put in jeopardy. Corruption has begun to enter you. Listen, child of God. God has a desire to prosper you. He has a desire that the plans and the prophecy he passed over your life must be accomplished. But some certain people that you are keeping are hindering the prophecy fulfillment. There are people you are keeping, they have been hindering some prophecies to come to pass. So this simply tells us that people are ready to receive from God but little things they do has made them miss their miracles. It has made you miss a miracle. You've been waiting from the Lord for 10 years just for the Lord to bless you. And you've gone for 9 months and a half. And a strange man appears from nowhere. A strange person appears from nowhere. Immediately they come into contact with you. You lose everything. But listen, tonight we're going to deal with that mixed multitude. Tonight we are dealing with a mixed multitude. Listen, in the book of Joshua chapter number 8, there's a story there. God is telling Joshua, he says, Joshua, you will conquer all. Praise the Lord. You will conquer all. And after Joshua conquers these big, big kings, he encounters a small clan. And Joshua is defeated. And Joshua goes back to the Lord and says, God, did you lie? And God says, I didn't lie. I'm not a man that I should lie. But what happened? And God says, Joshua, check among you. Check among you. There is somebody, there is somebody who is carrying what he was not supposed to be carried. You have lost the battle, not because you are not strong. Not, not that I was, I, I, I lied. You have lost the battle because you have kept somebody who has sinned against the Lord. You have kept somebody who was an abomination. So some of you, the Lord promised you a certain miracle. Yes, it is true. You have not received from him because of the certain people you have kept. You have certain people in your life. And those people are a are, are big time hindering what God is about to do. They are a major resistance. Listen, tonight you will do a checkup. Tonight you will do a checkup. Listen, you will not see God drop from heaven and come to take you out. You will not see God come from heaven and come to prophesy to you. In Exodus 3, it says, I have heard the affliction of my people. I am coming down to deliver them. But when Time for deliverance comes. He's sending a man. The time that he's supposed to take the children of Israel out of Egypt, he's sending a man. What does it mean? Which means God has enveloped himself in form of a man. If he appeared from nowhere, the children of Israel wouldn't have believed it that you are the Lord. Some of you, the problem that you have is speaking against the man of God. Speaking against the man of God. Listen, it is a privilege to have a man that can hear from the Lord. It is a privilege. It is a big privilege for you to have a man that hears from the Lord. Because every step you take, it is an instruction that God gives him. But every time he tells you an instruction and you resist the instruction, you are simply telling him, whoever sent you, I don't listen to him. Child of God. 
don't be the one to hinder your own miracle. The plan of God for everybody is that you shall succeed. You shall go far. But the little things around you, the little foxes, the little foxes that you've left. You come to Holy Ghost Embassy or you, you come to Holy Ghost Embassy every Tuesday, every Thursday, every Sunday. You have a, a friend of yours who says, I don't like that man of God. And you're keeping him? Listen, every time, every time you begin to hear things over and over, your faith is corrupted. The Lord has enveloped himself in his servant. And his servant is speaking to you every day you are hearing him. But listen, at no time has a servant lied to you. At, at no time has a servant of the Lord provoked you. At no time has a servant of the Lord lied to you. At no time has the servant of the Lord did anything bad. Now listen. Every time I come to you, I begin to tell you, do you know that he did this? Do you know that he did this? Do you know that he did this? Even when he has never done it to you, your mind is corrupt. You begin to take it even when he has never done anything but to you. You begin to, 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 to withhold yourself. Your services that you used to give him, you no longer give him. Be, not because you have seen something bad in him. Not because, not because he has ever done anything bad to you. But because your friend has been telling you. So some of you, your faith has just gone down. Because your friend has been feeding you with wrong information. Listen, tonight we are dealing with a mixed match. You will deal with them. You, if you not deal with them, you will forever be on the same level. You will forever be on the same level. There is nothing that God hates as doubt. Jesus himself, the Lord, coming down. He could not perform miracles in his own town. This is the Lord Jesus who is, who is capable of, of, in the twinkling of an eye, destroying anything. But the Bible says in his hometown, he couldn't perform a miracle. Why? Because the unbelief of the people was too strong. You know why you come Sunday here, the prophet prophesies, and his people are getting healed, people are getting delivered, and you still go back with your problem. Tonight, you better check yourself. Because you can't be coming in the house where your friends are getting filled and you're living empty. Not tonight. You can't. It is raining all over this place. Your friends are coming out wet. You are coming out dry. Hey, something is wrong with you. The anointing is pouring so strong. Everybody is carried away. You are, you are just as dry as before. Hey, come on. Tonight, you will deal with the little things that have hindered you. You do not steal. You do not fornicate. And you've been watching all the commands of the Lord. But you forgot that the people you have kept are also a thorn in your flesh. Child of God, do not provoke the anger of the Lord by keeping or following after this group that does not believe in the man that God has sent. That does not believe in God himself who has enveloped himself in flesh. They only believe in signs. They don't believe in the man. They don't believe in the man. They only believe in signs. 
If there's no prophecy, you will not come to church. These are the types of people. If there's no deliverance, you will sit at your home. Come on, God wants you to follow him. Follow him and follow the man he has sent for you. You are not following the signs. You are not people of a movement. You are people that are following a vision. You are not people of the movement. Whether there's no prophecy, you will stay. Whether there's no deliverance, you will stay. Whether there's no healing, you will stay. But one thing I can guarantee you, because God comes with power, these things will be found. He has loaded his servant with signs and wonders. Now, the people that follow signs and wonders are babies. Praise the Lord. I repeat, the people that follow signs and wonders are babies. The scripture says, for these signs shall follow them that believe. The signs and wonders shall follow them that believe. There are no people that come here, they don't apply for prophecy. They just sit in the audience. And the man of God, our father, just enters and says, you, come out. He begins to prophesy. Signs are following them. Signs are following Listen, you will deal with a mixed multitude. You will deal with anybody who causes confusion in yourself. Anyone who gives you the false doctrine apart from the doctrine that Jesus has raised. You have begun to hinder your own miracles. God is saying, wait, somebody is telling you, let's move. God is saying, wait for me. Your friend is telling you, move. Stay. You don't want to stay. You have become a person who is double-minded. You have become a person who has two people is listening to. If in a house the father says son come and the mother says son go the son will just stand because he, he has no direction this is the problem that we have in the body of Christ now you have a lot of people speaking to you a lot of people you have no voice God has given you a voice but you have allowed other voices to speak to you <laughs> and now your father told you don't do this and that voice went and they told you to say do it listen child of God it is high time we follow God according to his instructions. According to his instructions. His word is true and so solid than what your friend can tell you. His word is so solid that, than what your colleague can tell you. If you are said he will bless you, he will bless you, wait for him. If you are said lifting is coming, lifting is coming, wait for him. Don't allow somebody to come and corrupt your mind. Some of you, you some people have left and immediately 
they leave, the angel who is carrying their envelope of answer comes here and finds they are not present. Because the blessings that God has over man, they are always aligned to a geographical position and a time. Everybody, you can check in the Bible. There is always a place where God had to encounter man. It's only some of us who don't have a place where we want God to encounter us. Monday you are in, you are not in. The blessings of the Lord, whether it is healing, whether it is deliverance, whether it is the anointing you need, whether it is impartation you need, it is always has a geographical position, number one. It has geographical position, it has time, and it has a man who is coming with it. It has the man who is coming with it. Listen, you will overlook what your friends are going through because you're not going through the same things. And you will begin to perceive. You will focus your eyes on the Lord based on what he has given you via the man you have. Praise the Lord. Whether your friends are coming, they get blessed today, they leave. You will stay. Amen. You will stay. Amen. Because what you are looking for is not what they are looking for. We are all looking for miracles, but our miracles are different. They have different identities. Therefore, whether my friend gets his own miracle, it is his time I must celebrate him. Because my time is coming. The Bible says in the book of John, the man at the pool of Bethsaida, he is there. Now, there are a lot of porches, five porches at Bethsaida, but there is one that is carrying, that is carrying the healings, the deliverance of people. Different people. At that time, different people from wherever around the world will be at that place in Bethsaida. They will be waiting for the angel to come. Listen, when one gets their miracle, another one won't get discouraged to say, I am leaving. Because they don't know at the dealings and understanding the things of God how they work. I have understood sometimes in this place, you will find that somebody leaves and daddy says, where is that person going? This thing, this thing. Why? Because we need to be patient in the house of God. It is true that God is going to bless all of us. And it is also true that he will not bless us at the same time. So you better understand, you must understand the dealings of the spirit. Because the children of Israel and the Egyptians were two different people. Because the Egyptians by that moment, they were a superpower. And all magicians, they had all types of magicians. All the magicians were there. So, what the children of Egypt were, were into is not what the Israelites were into. So, why do you want to compromise over what God has for you because of your friend's status? They just followed them. Listen, you must understand your identity for you to deal with the people around you. 
Because if you don't understand your identity, if you don't understand who you are, you will keep even wrong people thinking they are of your same class. You lack identity of your own self. It's the reason why everybody comes to you. If you can have identity, know who you are, you will simply have a line where you can draw. This person can't draw here. He can't come here. If the children of Israel knew that God was going to punish them for murmuring, and the murmuring was caused because of the mixed group they carried, God is simply punishing some people not because, not because of anything but because of somebody they listen to. You have preferred to listen to a man than the voice of God. Listen. Tonight you will close your ears to listen to a strange man. You will open your ears and your sensitivity to listen to the voice of God. You will listen to the voice of God. Wow. Hallelujah. You will listen to the voice of God. You will listen to the directions of God. Listen, I will tell you one thing. When we were in Zambia, in Chilinabombwe, we were six guys, six guys who were serving our father. We were serving him while he was serving somebody. We are serving him and he's also serving his father. And I remember one time we sat and says, what becomes of our lives? Because it seems our father, we don't know if Holy Ghost embers will exist. And I remember Apostle Joe says, if he's to die with prophet, we'll die with him, Apostle. It will be very embarrassing for me who resign from work and carry papers and go again look for employment. So the six of us sat. And I remember that was a time we were not communicating with him. I didn't communicate with him for a long time. And it looked like <laughs> we have been abandoned. And a lot of people came telling me all sorts of things to save them, to move with them. And I stood, I said, no. Out of the six, two went. They went and started their own ministries. We remained four. Two left. They went and started their works. We remained the two of us. If it was not that we could, we, we, we would sideline with the anointing over the voice of man, by now I would have been here. I wouldn't have been here. Listen, if a mere man is speaking and the anointing has spoken, stand with the anointing. Stand with the anointing. Stand with the anointing. Because the time when the anointing comes to your rescue. Listen, the Bible says, the, uh, Oh my goodness, Jesus. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me to preach the good news to the poor. Which means if you have waited with the anointing, when it comes to manifest itself, your poverty will be lifted. Your sickness will be dealt with. Why? The anointing is more vividly than the voice of man. So choose to stand with the anointing. God is getting angry 
are the children of Israel for speaking against Moses. <laughs> Do you know why sometimes your life is in shambles? At one time you spoke against the man that God has raised for your sake. You spoke against the man that God has raised to deliver you. And God himself is angry. You know why? It is not because they insulted Moses. <laughs> it is not that they spoke against Moses. It is because they insulted the office of a prophet. And even when Moses says, I will forgive them, the office of the prophet says, we will not forgive him. He has violated the office of this man. Listen. You will not bite the finger that God has given you for direction. You will not bite the finger that God has given you for direction. If you bite it, you will not have direction tomorrow. Child of God. Tonight is a night that we are dealing with the little foxes we have kept. The little foxes we have kept. <laughs> I will be standing here with you. I can tell you that I believe in the voice that God has given me. I believe in it. I believe in the voice that God has given me. If you come home, the relation is different. If you come to spirituality, I hear, I know this is my voice. This is my voice. Listen, you better open your ears to the instruction of the Lord. You must open your ears what God is speaking to you. I want you to know, child of God, that this God whom we are serving, we are serving the Lord and he has given us people that are to teach us on how to serve him. Hallelujah. God has given us people that are in the forefront I want you to understand that every time God was speaking to the children of Israel he was not speaking to the entire congregation every time God was speaking giving instructions to the children of Israel he was not speaking to the entire congregation he was speaking to one man who will go and stand on behalf of God. So if you will not hear that man that God has sent for you, you will not hear God. You know why you've, you, you've not been blessed until now? It's because the man that God had given the blessing, he blessed you, you rejected the blessing and said God should bless you. There is the danger of you mingling with a mixed group. This group comes only to shake you. After a long time of being rooted in the word of God, of believing in the man of God, somebody comes just to make you, to, to temper with what God has planned for you. Even if you believe in God and you don't believe 
in who he has sent, you will not receive what God has sent. I repeat myself. You can believe in the Lord and doubt the one he has sent, you will not receive what God has sent for you. So many of us, we believe in God. We believe in God. And because we believe in God, God has established us. To establish us and to make us enjoy the establishment are different. Because enjoyment of, 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 of the establishment is by believing your prophet, your man that God has sent for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, I want somebody to ask themselves wherever they are and answer themselves. Check yourself. You will do a checklist tonight. When you go home, you, you will sit and begin to check around you. If this person is the hindrance to the anointing, I will check him out. Listen. If you can't save man, you will never save God. If you will not save, if you can't save man, you will save no God. Because the service you render to man teaches you the service you render to God. If you can't hear to what the anointed man has said to you, you will not hear to what God is saying to you. If you can't love man who you are seeing with your eyes, you will not love God. So this is the protocol. Listen, you will run away from anything that questions the anointing. I don't know today, people will say, Apostle, Apostle has been sent today to speak some other things. We know he preaches, he, he preaches some good messages, but today, I want you to know this is serious. We can't be coming here to tell you, you are blessed, you are blessed, and you live out and you leave the blessing in here. You leave church inside church. You, you, you left Pretoria, you came here for a service, you came in church, and afterwards you have left church in church. You will meet church again the following Sunday. Listen, blessings are a guarantee, but they always have a procedure and they have principles which you must follow. If you are seeking for blessings and you are look, overlooking principles, hey, you will not get it. And tonight, we are breaking that protocol. We are breaking the protocol of looking for miracles and overlooking principles. Because the blessings of God, they have got a certain channel which they come. They have a certain direction which they come. And you not identifying the direction you will still be crying. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Tell your neighbor I will not compromise. Tell your neighbor I will not compromise. Tell your neighbor I will not compromise. I can't hear. Tell your neighbor I will not compromise. Tell your neighbor I will not compromise. Listen, some can I address this? Some of you women, they, there is a problem here. It is every time you are seated, people are bringing news to your ears. 
You know, the reason that men are running away from you it is because you have got a lot of information on people. You are more than CNN. Everybody who wants bad news, they come to you. You don't carry good news. And how do you expect the blessing to land on you? When a man has come to marry you, they are just hearing problems of people. They are just hearing problems of people. Yet at no day do you speak good. Every time you open your mouth is bad. And you expect God to bless you. You are a young man. You don't know company. You don't keep company. You are just moving around robbers. Come on. Identify the people you are keeping. Let me give you this example. If a young lady is playing so much around married women and carrying their children, one day will mistake her to be a married woman and has a child. And no man will come for her. This, this is what happens because some of you, you have mingled with certain people who are carrying certain things and those things they are carrying are a hindrance to your own self. The things they are carrying, they are not good for you. They are good for themselves. Can you run away from them? They have a baby. They have marriage. It is good for them, not for you. You are, you are found with them. You are hindering your own miracle. So what does it mean? Some of you, you come to church. Somebody is telling you a wrong thing. Even if the instruction that Pops gave you is not my instruction. We can stand all of us ten. And, and Papa is going to give us different prophecies. And different instructions. So you must understand these things. There are certain people that are carrying good things and those good things, they are hindrance to your own self. They are hindrance to yourself. Listen, I want you to learn that God speaks with a familiar voice. God is speaking with a familiar voice. Because if there is no man to teach you the voice of God or to tell you what God is speaking, even if God speaks directly to you, you will not know that this is God speaking to you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. As I'm winding, two minutes, I'll be done. Tell yourself, say, my ear, my ear. needs anointing. Needs anointing. Say, my ear. my ear, needs anointing. <laughs> In the book of Exodus 29, when you read from 19 to 21, you will discover that God is giving an instruction to Aaron and his children. He is telling them on some certain things. He is telling them to anoint their ear. Hello? He is telling them to anoint their ear. Some of you, the problem you have is your ears. Your ears has received corrupt information. This is why the word of God cannot penetrate into your ear. That ear today needs the anointing. That 
here today needs the touch of God. He anointed the ear. Why? Because the ear needs to carry the news so that the, the news can be believed. Some of you, your ear. Listen, when we talk about the anointing, the anointing is a yoke breaker. Why should, we, why should your ear be anointed? It should be anointed that what you receive in, you will not receive bad things. You will only be receiving according to the plan of God. So some of you, your ear, your ear is so blocked with demonic cobwebs. But tonight, your ear will be set free. I say your ear will be set free. Your ear will be set free. If there's a voice you'll be listening to after tonight, it is the voice of God. If there's a voice you will listen to tonight, it is the voice of his servant. If there's a voice that will speak to you, it will be the voice of his servant. Tonight we are blocking your ear from listening to other things. We are blocking that news. We are cutting the antenna. We are cutting that antenna. Because your ear from tonight will be a carrier and a listener of God's voice. And even when you are sleeping, you will hear God speaking to you. I, some people, I wonder, they are sleeping in the night. They wake up only, the only news they heard is of the devil telling them wrong things. Why can't God speak Why they are, the ear needs anointing? <laughs> Tell your neighbor you need the anointing. 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 You know, some of you, your hands have a problem. Your hands have no limit. They are not disciplined. They touch even what does not belong to you. They are so long that even money that does not belong to you, you keep it for them. And you don't retain it. When you read that scripture, we are reading it, you will discover that God is saying, anoint their thumbs. Anoint their thumbs. Listen, we are dealing with the things that have been hindering you. And now I am telling you what we are going to do so that when you get your miracle, you get it for good. Some of you, you can't hold on to your miracle. You have no grip in your hand over your miracle. You don't have the grip. They just prayed for you the previous week. You got a job. Three months down the line, fired. You, you were prayed for. The HIV left you. Three months down the line, you have hypertension. You have no grip over your miracle. You know why? Your thumbs, you have no thumbs. This is what is happening. People have lost what they have because their thumb is not there. God is saying, tell Aaron to anoint his thumbs. Why? Because it is with a thumb that we endorse. Praise the Lord. It is with a thumb that we endorse. Hallelujah. It is with a thumb that we endorse. I don't know identity card how you do it here. But in my country, identity card, you use this thumb. 
So some of you, your thumbs have been lost. Is why the miracle has come and you lose it. For me to hold something, I need this thumb to help me. So some of you have miracles. The miracle has come. It is just there. You have no grip over it. And the enemy can easily take it away from you. Tonight, you will not lose your miracle. I said, tonight you will have the grip over your miracle. No, your amen is like, you're not here. I said, tonight you will not lose whatever God has put in your possession. Whatever God has assigned for you, you will have grip over it. Some of you, God has given you a child. Three months, the child is gone. Hey, come on. Tonight you will have your miracle and have it in full. You will not lose anything that God has put in your hands. Lastly, lastly, God is saying, anoint their toes, their big toes. Listen, without the big toe, man has no stability. <laughs> because with the feet we possess. Hello? With the feet we possess. But to possess and to have stability in the land you possess are different things. Because stability in the land you possess is what causes the manifestation of your possession. I've heard some people say they are blessed. Ah, yes, I'm blessed, I'm blessed. But what is the result of your blessing? Nothing. They are in the land where blessing is flowing. But yet, they can't have any blessing. Why? It's because there is no stability. There is no balance. When the wind comes, it blows them away. Whatever took you away from what God has planned for you, tonight we break it. I decree and declare. I decree and declare. Whatever made you lose the balance in the presence of God. Tonight it is leaving you. Tonight it is leaving you. Tonight it is leaving you. Every man that the devil has sent that should disturb the purpose and the plan over your life is no more. Is no more. I receive. Is no more. I receive. Any mixed group that has been sent to corrupt your faith is no more. I receive. It is no more. I receive. It is no more. I receive. It is no more. I receive. Anyone who has been sent that will bring corruption from you hearing the voice of God tonight they are no more I receive they are no more I receive they are no more I receive listen we are going to deal with the unbelief I am we are going to deal with unbelief because we are going to enter before I hand over to my father we are entering into about five minutes of prayer amen Jesus anointed Yes. enters in Capernaum his own city and the Bible says he tried here and there miracles couldn't happen yes. why because the, the people's hearts were closed the people couldn't believe in him why because they have seen him how he wakes up how he eats how he moves listen that will not be your case tonight Amen. that will not be your case tonight amen you are going to deal with any unbelief. I have come to wonder the people that cause confusion or this mixed group it doesn't leave the church. Yes. It stays by the door. It sits by the gate. 
Oh, I, okay, let me give you this example, but I don't mean ushers. Uh, ushers don't take it personal. It's an example. Amen. This mixed group sits by the door. As somebody is walking in, they look at you and say, you've come to worship. Do you know the man of God here? Do you know him very well? Do you know what he does? The way he does his hair. These are people that have a fault with the man of God, but they don't want to leave. They stay there. They are chasing people out of the presence of God and they are standing by the door. Oh, you've come. You are new here. You know the woman of God. These are people that have issues with people. They, they, they carry news about everybody. They want people to leave the church, but yet them, they are not leaving. Listen. We are not dealing with people that have been in, in, in church for a long time. We are dealing with people that are receptive to the voice of God. Amen. I have personally discovered that people that have been in church for a long time are a problem. <laughs> I know it. We started Holy Ghost Embassy. Yes. I can tell you, yes, I know. I know how prophets started. Hey, I know this. I know that. Come on. What do you know about your life? What do you know about what God is saying about you? Why do you know about other people's issues and your own? You don't know a thing about it. It's the reason you're not getting blessed because you concentrate on other people and yourself still on one level. <laughs> you will deal with such people. You will deal with such people because salvation is personal. Amen. It is personal. Listen, why am I telling you to avoid certain people? Even if I have never done anything bad to you, if you begin hearing only bad things about me, you will believe them even when I've never hated you. So, some people, they have no evidence, they have no proof, but they just behave funny towards the anointing which has been packaged to help them. <laughs> Here's a young lady looking for somebody to marry her. And this guy just approaches and says, Hi. He says, You're not my class. You're not my type. Where now? You are, you are just praying for marriage. You were just praying for marriage. But now look at your behavior towards your prayer. Your behavior towards your prayer is different. You just prayed yesterday, man of uh, uh, You prayed a very good prayer and God says, I have heard you. I have answered. You just in that church find this sister says come come you know that yesterday I saw Apostle Peter the way I saw him <clears throat> something suspicious about him something is suspicious because I know Apostle Peter but the way he was looking yesterday and the way he was coming he just bypassed me never greeted me that person ran away tell them I don't want to see you again Listen, I have lost connection. I have lost people. Not because I hated them, but because they just spoke one word about my voice. Somebody wrote to me on Facebook. On Facebook, after wrote, wrote to me, I, I just read the message. I said, I don't know if you have a father. I blocked the person. And friended the person and told that person, never in your life send me a request. Why? I avoid 
hindering my own miracle because of what I'm hearing. Many of you, the hindrance to your miracle is just your ears. If you can, because your mouth cannot speak without hearing. Your mouth only responds to what you heard. This is why faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. It is after you hear the word of God that you have confession. You have conviction in your heart and you begin to confess the word of God. So some of you, you have got no word of God in you. This is why when you open your mouth, it is gossip. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I want us to pray for a few minutes. I want us to pray for five minutes because tonight God is doing something unusual. God is doing something unusual. Listen, your miracle is already here. Only those that are ready to take it, they will take it. But listen, what, why am I talking like this? The miracle is hanging. But a certain man is, is wrestling with you for you not to get this miracle. Now this man is coming so good and so, so sweet. He's speaking to you with a sweet voice. Wow, your miracle is just hanging, waiting for you to grab it. So what you are going to do, we're going to push that man out and go for our miracle. Shall we be on our feet? Jesus. Say Lord. Lord. Say Lord. Lord. Speak like you mean it. Say Lord. Lord. Lift up your voice and say Lord. Lord. Say Lord. Lord. Any voice. Any voice. Any voice. Any voice. That has been wanting. That I'll be wanting. To replace. To replace. The voice of God. The voice of God. The voice of your servant. The voice of your servant. In my life. In my life. Today. Today. I silence you. 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 Any word. Any word. Any word. Any word. That entered my ear. Ear. That has brought corruption, that have brought corruption to, my faith, to my faith. To my faith. To my faith. Today, today I nullify you. I nullify you. I nullify you. Lift up your voice. I begin to pray. Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. Ika para sataya erosoto mashatiza balia elosoto ba ikatelika Lord I decree I declare by your spirit by your spirit look at every hindrance every hindrance to your presence every hindrance to your voice every hindrance to your voice today I destroy it 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 in the name of Jesus In Jesus' precious name we are prayed. Amen. In Jesus' precious name we are prayed. Amen. Every time the children of Israel had repented against God, or every time they did something wrong and they repented, God restored to them what they lost. Amen. Listen, because of your repentant heart, 
I see restoration tonight. I receive it. I see restoration tonight. I receive it. I see restoration tonight. I receive it. Whatever you could hold tonight, you will hold it. I receive it. After this night, you will hold your miracle. I receive it. You will hold your miracle. I receive it. You will hold your miracle. I receive it. Whatever was making you unstable, I see it no more. I receive it. 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 I decree and declare. I receive. In the shoes of my father, I receive it. Prophet Didi Isaac, I, receive I stand it. on this altar. I receive it. Anyone who spoke bad about I you, I receive it. any ear that spoke bad about I you, receive it. I decree today you are set free. I receive you it. are set free. I receive it. You are set free. I receive it. Any hindrance to your miracle. I receive it. Any hindrance to your miracle. I receive it. Tonight you will not see it. I receive it. You will wake up the following morning, you will never see it. I receive it. Because it is God. I receive it. It is God. I receive it. It is God. I receive it. Listen. Power. When declarations are taking place, it's like it's like a male frog releasing releasing, releasing, releasing and those and a female frog that has the eggs will also be ready to caption it. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Listen. Receiving is for free. The only payment to receiving is open your mouth and receive. And we don't lift up, we don't receive just like that. Lift up your hands. In the shoes of my father. I receive it. In the shoes of my father, prophet Didi I said, I receive it. Whatever was hindering you to hear the voice of God. I receive it. Tonight you will not hear it anymore. I receive it. After tonight it is dead. I receive it. After this moment it is dead. I receive it. Whatever caused you to lose your miracle. Tonight they are leaving you. I receive it. 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 I see victory. 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 I receive it. I can hear a sound of abundance. I receive it. I can hear a sound of abundance. I receive it. I can hear a sound of abundance. I receive it. I can see a sound of abundance. I receive it. I can see overflow. I receive it. I can see overflow. I receive it. I can see overflow. I receive it. Receive it, receive it, receive it, receive it. Receive it. Power. Oh my God. Jesus. Lift up your hands. Lift up your hands. Father, as your people have, have lifted up their hands, as they have opened their hearts, I receive it. Lord, in the shoes of my father, I receive it. In his grace, I receive it. I prophesy. I receive it. That after tonight, I receive it. Any hindrance to hearing your voice, I receive it. Via your servant, I receive it. It is no more. I receive it. It is no more. I receive it. It is no more. I receive it. Lord, I decree and declare. I receive it. Every child of Holy Ghost Embassy. I receive it. I see financial breakthrough. I receive it. I see financial breakthrough. I receive it. I see marital doors opening. I receive it. Marital doors are opening. I receive it. Marital doors are opening. I receive it. Careers are opening. I receive it. Careers are opening. I receive it. I see healing taking place. I receive it. I see healing taking place. I receive it. I see deliverance. I receive it. I see deliverance. I receive it. Take it. I receive it. Power. Lift up your hands. Thank him. 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 He's good. He's good. He's good. Lift up your hands and thank him. Thank him. Thank him for the word you have received. Thank him for the word you have received. Your life will never be the same again. Thank him for the word. 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 King of kings, we thank you. King of glory, we thank you. We give you praise. We give you glory. In Jesus' name. Can somebody shout amen? amen. Lift up your hands, shout, I am blessed. I am blessed. 
Lift up your hands, say, my life will never be the same again. Say, oh Lord, remove every demonic man away from my life. Remove anyone who takes away faith from my life. In the name of Jesus. Father, Bring good, people Bring good people along my way. Along my way. In, Jesus name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Put the two hands for Jesus. If you can continue clapping hands, it will help you to receive a miracle. <laughs> Hallelujah. Take our seats. Take our seats. Make a decision. Whether to have a miracle or not to have a miracle. Your ears, your mouth, your hands, your toes. What do you do with them? The Bible says if there is anything around you that causes you to sin. To sin. Even God gives you permission to cut it off. To cut it off. Peter helped a soldier who could not hear Jesus. He helped, he helped the soldier who could not hear Jesus. Peter took a sword, the word of God, and he chopped off the ear. Because the man was flesh. I believe that this word has entered your spirit. Not just your ears. It has entered your spirit. It will remain. And go and work on it. Yada on it. Ponder on it. Meditate on it. And the Lord will bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. That man there, the white man. Stand up. How are you? Is it your first time? Is it your first time? Is it your first time? Yeah, in this church. Okay. Can I speak to you? You want to speak to me? Can I speak to you? Yes. Huh? Yes. Prophecy! No prophecy. The time when I was here preaching to you, you were not shouting. I rebuke you. The Lord is about to bless you. I receive. Uh, there's been a challenge over your life financially for the past eight months. There's been a, a financial challenge. The Lord is about to open up opportunities for you that will surprise you. I receive it. Okay. It is your first time. I know these things, you know, they are very strange for you. They're very strange. But I can tell you as a prophet that the Lord God Almighty, I saw 11 fruits. 11 fruits. When I looked at the 11 fruits, the Lord says, look at them very well. Look at them very well. Then I saw the fruits producing. And the Lord says, whatever you will have tomorrow, tomorrow, it shall produce to a hundredfold. 
There is a miracle. There is a miracle that God is going to release tomorrow around 6 o'clock. In the morning. 6 o'clock. Wait. Wait. I saw you, Kalanos Kopranos Kovranizo. I received it. I saw in the spirit. I saw Shaliga Zuva Libraneskova. I saw somebody. Are you in a relationship? No, I'm not. Are you in a relationship? No. But next to you, you are having somebody. Next to you, you have somebody. God told me to confirm to you. Because for the past 11, 11 years, the Lord said the fruits that you have seen for the past 11 years is the years that this man was supposed to get married. And now there's been a challenge even in the area of settlement. But the Lord says, they are going to be, there's going to be a settlement. God is going to give you a woman. She's going to be coming from Eastern Cape. She'll be a Tosa woman. A Tosa woman. Oh. <laughs> I receive it. <laughs> A Tosa woman. Have you heard? Eh? I receive it. Yeah, a Tosa woman. Power! Professor! Do you know somebody who was born in April? Uh, sorry? Do you know somebody who was born in April? Born in April? April. April. Do you know somebody who was born in April? In where? In April? In April. April. Uh, Emperor. A P R I L. No, not, no, not that I'm aware of. There's somebody who's born in April. Your wedding, you. Uh, I receive. Him, he even doesn't know. The lady is next to him. And he's praying. He's praying. The lady is next to you. Professor! Yes! Spiritual sharpshooter! Who came with this man? Who came with this man? Who came with you? Huh? You are from where? Ask her. You are from where? I'm from Eastern Cape. Professor! Did you rise it? Shh! You! The Lord is going to bless you. Don't take it for granted. This connection is a divine connection. Amen. Have you heard? I mean, it's a divine connection. You want? That's a reason a prophet. A, you think a prophet? A prophet is just there. You are seated next to somebody. Power. Yeah. You are a very good man. You are a very good man. And what God is going to do with your life. I receive it. Wait. Okay. Do you know Johanna? Johanna. Is it Johanna? Jo Johanna. J O N J O H N. Yeah. Um. J O H N. Johan, what about it? Huh? What about it? Do you know J do you know this name? J O H N? Yes, I do. Who, wh what is the connection? What is the connection? A previous manager. A previous manager with John. Uh, yeah. Professor! You know, you, you are a very intelligent man. A very intelligent man. But every time you see this man. Is about to settle. They will fire him. They will fire him. Or it's either something bad. It will happen at his workplace. But the Lord says. The 11 fruits that you have seen. Represents multiplication. There will be something that is going to take place. In the month of April. What is the month? What is the month? I say around 6 o'clock. I receive it. Around 6 o'clock. I receive it. 6 o'clock. Tomorrow. Be expected because, in fact, switch on your phone. Switch on your phone because there will be good news that is going to come to your phone. 
I receive it. The Lord said for the past 11 years you have never heard any good news. But the Lord says tomorrow it is your day. He will remember you. He will it. surprise. If you are receiving I also, it. he will surprise you. I receive it. Have I ever met you before? Sorry? Have I ever met you? No. Yeah, we have never met. Great. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to speak to you. Some of the things are not mentioned them here. I will speak to you personally. I need to talk to you. I need to guide you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Put your two hands for Jesus. Pow! That is the work of the prophet. Do you know a prophet can cause you to be married? Even if they cursed you. Even if they put a, a face of a monkey. When you come to me, I have the ability. Yes. The ability. A certain lady, she was an old, 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 old mama. She was about 50, 50 years. She entered my office. I looked at her. And I said, oh, this one, she needs marriage. And another man entered. Another man entered. And I looked at him. said, this one is single. I said, ah, why can't they do? <laughs> So I said, I said, you, come here, you. I just mentioned, I mentioned his name. I mentioned the, you know what I did? I make this man separate. I said, sir, you are going to meet a woman by the name of so-so and so-so. This should be born in such kind of a place. And I said, you are going to meet on the, on the door. And also I told the, the woman the same thing. I, said, I mentioned the name. I said, you will meet at the door. So the man is going out. The woman also is coming in. <laughs> Pow! You're, you want to pray again. So the, the woman, she began to look at this man. Like, mm, the features. Ah, this is what Papa said. It did not take even 30 minutes. They just greeted each other. How are you? No, I'm fine. What is your name? What is your name? The woman mentioned the name. The man mentioned the name of the blood. From there, they exchanged numbers. From WhatsApp, 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 WhatsApp. From WhatsApp, hey, what is in the marriage now? Power! Hallelujah. Prophets, 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 prophets. Lift up your hands. Say, Father. Father. Give me grace. Give me grace. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you so much for all those that are watching us on uh, Facebook. May the Lord bless you. Amen. May the Lord protect you. In Jesus' name. I hope you were fasting. As you can see that uh, we are going to take communion to covenant ourselves to what God is about to do tonight. Amen. God bless you. Shalom, shalom. Put up your hands for Jesus.